Exactly. All right, guys, we got about a, a minute here, and as soon as as soon as he's in the uh, as soon as he's in the video here, we're gonna bring him up. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the Kill Stream on Rumble. Our guest today is going to be Ethan Ralph. He's going to be checking in in just a minute here. And uh, I'm very excited to talk to him. He unbanned me from Twitter recently uh, because I was a cunt about a year ago. Yes, you were. Uh, when I we, think I was too. When we first started on Twitter, or when we first started on Twitter, uh, when we got banned on Twitch and we came to YouTube, we wanted to, like, get in algorithms. You, we wanted to go algorithm hopping to, like, pump up the numbers. And the Ethan Ralph algorithm was hot. We just kind of jumped in. Mm -hmm. It's not like the Zumok thing where we started that shit. Like, we found a clip of him, and we're like, oh, this guy's hilariously ridiculous. But we were having fun. Yeah, we kind of just started it by, you know, teasing him. Uh, the Ralph thing was definitely like, oh, everyone seems to be jumping on this guy. Let's make fun of him, too. And then, like, we had Cog on, and, like, I, I, don't, I don't dislike Cog at all, but then... It all, that was kind of the first community that got way too internet-y for me. Okay. And I'm just like, oh, wait, I didn't realize everybody takes sides and there's team this and there's team that. And I'm like, I just want to talk about shit. Yep. And I was kind of a dick. So I'm like, we're going to back off this one. It, it's like, there's 15,000 other channels covering this shit and I don't do the best job. So I'm going to uh, back off. And because I had made those videos, uh, Ethan obviously banned me on, uh, or blocked me on Twitter. And then recently, somebody uh, that I follow retweeted uh, something Ralph did. And it was uh, a rant that he went on on his show. And it was like so like radio guy slash pro wrestler promo mm -hmm. that I was like, oh, that's fucking hilarious. Like, you can't stop the Ralph Amell. And I'm like, fucking hell, right? Jeez. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know what, guys? We're not going to make it to the Ralph interview. I'm going to die first. Oh, well, I'm, who should I take on the I'm, trip then? I'm going to end up dying before we actually get him on. <laughs> I apologize. So we end up, and uh, we'll bring him up in just a second here. So he ends up unblocking me after I was uh, a cunt when we first got to YouTube. And I just, I got in touch with him and I said, hey, you know, I'm really sorry. I was a fucking, like, uh, what do they call that? Pylon hopping douchebag. Kind of. And, uh, you know, it looks like you're doing very well. You'll see in a minute. I mean, he's, uh, he's completely, like, physically transformed Different and uh, I was talking to a bunch of people at our comedy show uh, with uh, Lila and Nick and I was talking to Riley and, and all these other people and they're like yeah Ralph you know Ralph's fucking great you know you gotta you gotta talk to him and this and that and then I uh, somebody retweeted a, a rant that Ethan did that was fucking hilarious and I went wait a minute I'm not blocked anymore so I wrote him I apologized and this and that and I said you gotta you gotta come on the show and and for someone that you know you go to him and you just openly say hey man I was a fucking cunt to you and I'm sorry. And then you go, hey, will you come on the show? Those people are well within their rights to go, no, I, thanks for saying you're sorry and everything, but go fuck yourself. Right. And nope. uh, this guy said, no, absolutely, I'll come on. No problem. So uh, here he is, the host of the Kill Stream. Make sure you subscribe on Rumble and every other platform. The Ralph Mail, Ethan Ralph. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing this morning? Wonderful. We're about to, uh, we're about to get out of here and go on a plane and uh, go see the Vikings in Las Vegas, uh, beat the Raiders. And uh, you are you're you're the man sending us off, so to speak. Very cool, very cool. I've been to Las Vegas many times. My last trip didn't go, <laughs> didn't go to plan. But uh, yeah, I've done a lot of things in that city. Didn't go uh, well. What happened? City. What happened? Oh uh, well, well, I you know I got a little too into the um, extracurriculars, I guess you could say. Um, so I'm staying away from Vegas for a while. But I've done a lot in that city, oh, no. so it is one of my favorite places. Yeah, that'll happen. I gotta first of all, I, I just want to, as I just said in the setup. I want to thank you. You were uh, you were very cool about uh, you know the first the unblocking and then the apology and all that other shit. Um, it, it, it kind of flies in the face of everything I've heard about you that you know you know all you know all the shit that people say. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you very much. That was very uh, cool of you and very nice of you to come on. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, and I you know I don't even remember why I blocked you to be honest. Um, <laughs> I was being a cunt. Ooh, yeah, man. you probably said something. I have a kind of a quick trigger sometimes on that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, and uh, I saw you, I guess you were with Rakate. I think it was what we were talking about. I saw you at that uh, show, and um, Mersh or Rakate or somebody had, had retweeted you, and I was like, oh, I got this guy blocked. Let me unblock him. And then uh, you reached out very kindly, and, uh, yeah, I was glad to come on. I don't, you know, I stream so much. Uh, on my own, I don't get to do much outside appearances uh, anymore. So, yeah, I was glad to do it. Well, you uh, now obviously the kill stream has been going for like years now. How many years have you been doing the kill stream? So, 
technically has been going since 2015, uh, but the modern iteration of the kill stream uh, it was about 2018. I used to do it once a week, uh, and 2018 is when I started the the full week schedule. Uh, so eight years really, but uh, about five years of the modern uh, iteration of the kill stream. And there's been a lot of twists and turns. Yeah. I got to talk to a lot of interesting people, and uh, it's been it's been the privilege of a lifetime, honestly. Now the format uh, in the beginning, and you can tell us how it's changed, but the format in the beginning, as I remember, was people would come on and you guys would just have it out. I think the term the internet gave it was internet blood sports. I mean, you guys would just come on. It would get uh, it would get very uh, YouTube unfriendly nowadays, language-wise, I guess, and you guys would just fucking go after it. Uh, how's it changed? Well, um, you know, I do a longer format now, uh, so it's all throughout the day, uh, and it used to come on. It used to be a you know, full late night show would come on about 10 or 11 PM Eastern. Uh, so it has a little bit different vibe when you come on that late at night. Uh, and I did enjoy doing the, the late night show, but, um, you know, we still have, we still have a bit of that, but when you do, you know, six, eight, 10 hours, sometimes show, uh, you kind of have to spread it out. So there's live new news coverage, you know, yeah. do interviews and we still have, we still have blood sports tonight. We have Dick Masterson and Amy Therese coming on, not nice. a fully fledged blood sports, just a conversation sure. uh, on Israel and Gaza. So we still do a bit of that, but <laughs> when it's longer, you know, you kind of have to add some other stuff in there, but uh, yeah, I, I enjoy doing the blood sports. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy doing the interviews and I do some on location stuff and moderate some debates. We did one of those last weekend as well. So I, yeah, it's, it's, I love awesome. I love how you say we're gonna have Dick Masterson on and we're gonna talk about Israel and Hamas and you're like I don't think it'll get real blood sporty I'm oh. like yeah that topic I mean that sure that won't, won't get out of hand never yeah it, it might and that's also Dick talking to a woman so that might be <laughs> that's yeah. uh, probably some fireworks there too and he's gonna come on a few minutes before maybe 15 minutes or so before we'll talk about Maddox uh, a little bit too okay. we've been covering the the video that Maddox Man. put out so that whole world that you're wrapped up in is fucking wild to me i mean just like because i like i i come from radio i'm a radio guy and like getting i i watch myself on not getting too immersed in internet shit because it'll kind of drive you nuts and you you've certainly had plenty of that in in your career uh how do you handle like how do you handle the world you're in because i dipped a toe into like talking about you in the past and people just go fucking ape shit and i go you know what no i'm not i'm not getting involved how do you deal with it well, there's been a lot of crazy things that happened to me. I see um, Jonathan Cog Harrison in chat. Uh, he attacked me on the street with his thug, uh, Dan. Uh, so there's been a lot of crazy stuff. That's just one of the crazy things that's happened to me. Yeah. Um, but I completely understand um, why somebody might not want to get involved because it does get it does get pretty crazy. Uh, a lot of personal attacks, and you know, I've had that happen to myself. I've went after people personally. Um, you know, a lot of um, doxing. You know, people showing up at my house. I've yeah, been swatted sure. about twelve times uh, or so, including here in Mexico. Uh, so it is, it is a, a little crazy corner uh, of the internet. And yeah, I completely understand why somebody <laughs> might take a pass yeah. uh, on that sort of thing. Probably but the other way. Uh, just, just having yeah. you on, just, just announcing uh, that we were going to have you on today. You know, even just fans of ours are going, yeah, fuck that, fuck Ralph, you piece of shit, this and just awful shit. And I'm just like, you know what? Those are the people I want to talk to, though. I want to yes. talk to the people who, when you say, just saying their name, people go, fucking shit, cut, piece of monkey shit, fucking name. It's got, there's got to be a part of you because you, you have kind of a, a, a pro wrestling cutting promo kind of vibe to you. So there's got to be something in that kind of uh, heel heat, as they say, that does kind of rev your engine a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, I'm the heel uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, and I've kind of cultivated that image. Like you say, I cut promos and kind of lean into the pro wrestling aspect. I mean, this is pro wrestling, basically, in a lot of ways, yeah. uh, at least my corner of the Internet. And so I do lean into that. Uh, I've leaned into the into the heel persona. Uh, and my thing is, you know, you never want to be boring uh, right. and you want to oh. engender a reaction, whether good or bad. And I have a lot of people who like me, too. Uh, but I definitely have a lot of people 
people who hate me as well. And in a lot of ways, it's, it's kind of thrilling uh, because <laughs> uh, I, I do get a reaction, uh, good or bad. And sometimes it is bad. So, uh, you know, I've leaned into it. Yeah. I uh, feel like you thrive off that, too. I, en- I enjoy yeah. it, but I couldn't handle. Like I said, man, I'm I'm radio guy level immersion, which is a, a, a much more normie level of immersion than what what Ralph deals with. And I while I thrive on kind of the heel heat, too. Your your level is, I mean, to see you kind of come out of it now, and I think you were saying uh, on your show not too long ago, you're like, hey, a few months ago, a lot of this shit might have fucked me up pretty bad, but now I'm in a much better place. Now, first of all, you you look much better. You've lost a, a shit. You. You, yes. you lost a shitload of weight. You look great. Um, it, thank you. What now? Kind of go into detail with that. You say like a few months ago, you guys might have caught me slipping and everything else. What have you done the last few months that's kind of got you uh, not reinvigorated, but kind of in a different direction? Well, you know, I had so, I can't really talk about all the personal life stuff, but I had some uh, controversies, I guess you could say, uh, in my personal life, kind of knocked me off uh, course. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I've talked about this publicly, so it's not a secret. You know, I've had. Um, struggles with alcohol abuse and uh, drug abuse and stuff like that. And you kind of get used to drinking on air and kind of being fucked up really uh, for the shows. And that kind of, you know, the older you get, um, the heavier that stuff kind of weighs on your system, you know? Uh, And so I've gotten out of that, been sober since uh, September 4th. And I've had some streaks of sobriety earlier this year, Uh, but not just that lost the weight uh, even during my, you know, down periods this year, I I focused on, on losing weight and uh, that's kind of reinvigorated me too. And I I think a lot of people have started to take notice of that recently. I saw Elijah Schaefer say a lot of nice things about me. And that's a guy, you know, you talk about feuds. Uh, I went, I went in on him really hard, too hard, uh, honestly. Uh, And so that was, that was really nice of him. I've gotten a lot of people, uh, you know, reaching out to me and uh, even people who don't like me uh, said, you know what? This guy's an asshole. I don't fucking like you, but congratulations on the weight loss. Congratulations on, um, you know, kind of turn it around a little bit. And I don't want to act like I have it all figured out. You know, sure. I, I still have uh, uh, some work to do and, you know, I'm, I'm a human like anybody else, but um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a little bit of a turnaround uh, this fall and uh, it's, it's been, a, it's been a pleasure. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what happened. You know, I, I tried to use the, uh, the personal downturns um, in a good way, right? To right. have something good good to show out of it. Yeah, uh, because it, as someone who was, like, seeing the clips and stuff, obviously you're one of the more clipped guys out there, and, and yes. seeing them, like, it was. It was it was getting away from you a little bit, and a lot of people, yeah. it, it's really easy to just lean into the skid and just fall apart, and when people pick themselves up out of that, I mean, that's that's pretty huge. Has it, has it changed the way you, like, you've interacted with the internet in general, have you pulled back a little bit and gone like, look, I'm because my attitude is always, I'm going to do my show. Everyone else can kind of say what they want. I get to do my show. They get to critique, criticize, say what they want. God bless them. I'm not going to look at it, read it, whatever. Has it, uh, you know, as you get into this kind of better mindset and this healthier way of living, do you kind of, uh, I-, I guess, disengage a little bit? Yeah, I've tried to, you know, it's a little hard uh, when you have, you know, I mentioned that weirdo earlier and you have people sniping at you all the time or saying this or that Mm -hmm. about your personal life or attacking you with things that are true and untrue. Uh, And so there's people every day. I can't say that I haven't uh, indulged uh, in some responses here or there, but I've tried to to get away from the uh, hardcore psycho mode is what I tried the other day. I still have that in me, uh, but uh, joyful spite uh, is what I said the other day too, is what yeah. I've uh, been trying to lean into uh, and just, you know, ha- get back to having fun with it. Right. Sur- uh, surfing. Not that I stopped yeah. having fun, but not, not delving into the uh, bitterness uh, as much. And, you know, it's still yeah. a work in progress. I can't say that I've <laughs> hit it on the head every single yeah. uh, day out, but yeah, that has been something I've tried to do. Um, and, you know, Christmas season and stuff. Um, I, I think, you know, I mentioned the Elijah stuff. I think a lot of people, um, you know, have liked me, uh, you know, mending some fences. Ricada, we had a blood feud as well. Yeah. Uh, mended that fence earlier in the year. So, so um, I, I think that that's uh, been something that people have liked to see. And people people like uh, a redemption arc. People like, um, you know, people who maybe they like me. Maybe they like Riketa. Maybe they like us all, Elijah. Yeah. Uh, and seeing us come together a little bit. Uh, I, I think that that's something that um, a lot of people, most people uh, enjoy seeing. Yeah. Now, what was the what was the hardest thing for you to uh, 
to kick? Was it was it substance wise, or was it like what what was the thing you well and and you like you said you're still on that in that kind of process. What was the what was kind of the toughest thing to kick? The toughest thing to kick. Well, you know, you get used to uh, drinking on air uh, is something, and this is not just me. A lot of performers, uh, people way more known than me, actual celebrities, uh, you know, have talked about this. Um, you, you get used to performing under the influence, mm-hmm. uh, and you you think that you need it really, uh, or this makes me funny or this is what people expect. Uh, and so that was, that was a little hard. Um, and then, um, Xanax. Oh, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Xanax is, is, is something that's, that's very hard to kick. And, um, you know, I've, I've had some problems with drinking, uh, before, but, uh, you, you mix in the Xanax and that's something anybody who's listened to this, uh, who've had some problems with that, uh, substance, it can really fuck up your life in every single way, uh, that you can imagine. So that was, that was a little yeah. hard to kick. Um, but I have kicked it and, you know, it's something you got to stay vigilant on. It's not like you, um, just cause you're not doing those things doesn't mean you don't still have those problems and right. you can't, uh, pat yourself on the back too hard or, or you'll be right back in that, uh, that sort of pattern. Yeah. So, um, those two things. And like I said, just, just, you know, being used to being under the influence and, and almost thinking that you need that, uh, was something that you have to you have to kind of kick mentally and the only way to do it is to go out there and do the shows sober and get into that mode. Uh, and I've been doing pretty good with it, but yeah, those, those are probably the two hardest things. You know, as they say, you can, as we've seen in some clips recently, like you you didn't need the, the booze or the pills or anything. You can still, uh, you can still get to holler and you can still yell and shout. You can, (laughs) you can, you can still, you can still cut a promo. Yeah, I can still do it sober. Uh, and, you know, some people like seeing it, uh, you know, half cocked, half drunk or fully drunk. Um, but, yeah, I still have that uh, that in me. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm just a lot more competent uh, overall, especially with interviews and, and stuff like that. And, yeah. you know, I, I just think it's a better show uh, when I'm sober. And I used to think the exact opposite. Uh, and it takes a while. You know, your brain and part of it is addiction to, you know, you're looking for any reason to use like your subconscious. Uh, or whatever, but um, yeah, it's it's um, it's something you know. I can still entertain. I can still yeah. do what I need to do and and get fired up. And you're just it you're sharp. Yeah, take alcohol. When you get you know? that shit, you know, when you don't involve that shit in your show, you're just sharper. I mean, all of us. I mean, yeah, you're you're just sharper when you don't have booze and all that stuff slowing you down. And uh, you get it, it fucks you up because if you listen to the audience too much, the, you know, they they don't. And I'm not saying they need to give a shit about you as a person, but they don't. They give a shit about you as an entertainer. And I personally, I think that's healthy. But as an entertainer, they see you drunk and there's that kind of sideshow element of it where they go, oh, we love this. We love this. And if you read too much of that, you'll go, oh, well, then that's what I need to do when you don't realize that. Yeah, but when I'm off of this shit, I can still have fans. They still like me and for different reasons. Yeah, you know, there's um, so I. There, there was a lot of people who supported me through thick and thin, sober or fucked up or whatever. And I love those people. And they just, you know, they enjoy my show no matter what. And they supported me through everything, even when I was making mistakes. Uh, and, you know, then there's um, there's a subset who want to see you. Um, and not that those people don't, too, but um, there's there's a subset who, who want to see you do better and who are like, yeah, he's sober now. I want to support more. I want to see him doing good in life. And you know, it was pretty bad earlier this year. People saw me, I, you know, I was way fatter and, you know, looked about <laughs> 10 years older and was fucked up on air and nodding out and shit yeah. on pills. And, you know, that's a, you know, some people who, who really care about me was were worried that I was going to die like on yeah, air or something, right? Because it was, it was kind of that bad. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I'm blessed to have a lot of people who wanted to see me, uh, do better. Uh, and so I, I love those people and I thank those people. And then there are the people who, um, either don't like you or they just, like you said, they just want the crazy. Yeah zany atmosphere uh and so those people are still there who, it's, who and would, those people uh, encourage you yeah yeah those people aren't even necessarily their their aim is not even nefarious they just they right. like what they like and someone being fucked up on air they're like oh i really like this but like the for the person behind the microphone it's like yeah I, this is not sustainable i can't keep doing either. this Right. And, the, and they like, you know, it's, it's a little bit of loss of self-control uh, when, you, when you get into that uh, that level of being fucked up. And people, some people enjoy that. Right. Like they yeah. don't know what Ralph's going to do next. Right. I might. Uh, there's no telling where it might go or what he might say or maybe he says something he ain't 
supposed to say. And, yeah. uh, you know, people, um, some people, uh, enjoy that. And, um, you know, it's, it's just not sustainable long-term and it's, it's wild because, um, you know, I made a lot of money, uh, and don't remember making it, right? <laughs> like, you know, uh, and did a lot of shows that people are like, Oh, it's a classic or this or that. And I don't fucking remember right. doing it. Uh, and when you get success, uh, in that mode, you know, in your mind, you're like, well, they can't tell me shit. Like, I, you know, I was fucked up and did this, this and that, and people loved it. And it's kind of, um, uh, self perpetuating, uh, yeah. self oh, sure. um, propelling thing, right? And it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, of course, uh, you know, I'll do whatever, I'll drink, I'll be fucked up. Uh, you know, I'm the Rafa male. You know, you start living the gimmick, uh, yes, to use, yeah. a, to use a wrestling term, right? right. Uh, and that's not what you want to do. That's a, and look, the, Ra- the Ralph male is a great gimmick. I, uh, you know, I've always, I think it's a fucking awesome, n- it's just a funny nickname, the Ralph male. But again, like, if you, if you keep it in gimmick land and embrace it and bring it out when you need to, it's mm. great. But like you said, when you start to live it, you know, the gimmick starts controlling you rather than you controlling the gimmick. Uh, you, you mentioned that, you know, you've had some personal struggles and things like this, and we won't get into specifics. But in terms of this this journey of, uh, of redemption, so to speak, that you've been on, was there any kind of uh, moment that solidified or any kind of issue that solidified the, the thought in your head that, holy shit, I got to get a grip on this? I got to go in a different direction. Was there any one catalyst for it or did it all just kind of pile up? Well, it, it piled up, but you know, obviously I, and I can't talk about the uh, exact specifics, I understand. but I, I had a major down. I'm not allowed to. Actually. No, I get it. Uh, I get it. I get but, it. But I, but I had a, I had a major downturn uh, in my personal life uh, and early September, you know, there was a, a huge firestorm and, you know, stuff coming from every which direction. And, um, there, there was, a, there was a, a day, you know, September 4th. Uh, and then that week where, you know, I was like, if I don't get this under control, um, not only am I not going to have a career, but, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna end in a bad way. My life, yeah. right. Like in a really bad way. And I was on the path, you know, like I said, people were thinking I was going to die on air and talking about yeah. it openly. And it wasn't that crazy of a thought. Uh, and so, you know, you start hearing that, uh, you start, um, it takes a while, at least for me sometimes, um, even if you know what you should do, uh, to have that realization. So I would say, I would say early September, um, where it finally hit me and I lost a lot, uh, and lost a lot of things that I didn't want to lose. Um, but it, you know, you have to take that on board. You have to accept that. And it's like, well, I still have a lot. I still have a lot yeah. of people who care about me. I'm mm-hmm. still able to, to get great guests and, and do this for a living, but that might not be the case, uh, if, if I don't turn it around. And yeah. so, yeah, I would say early September, um, was when I really had that, that full realization that, uh, that, I, that I needed to make some changes. That is a near Jedi like ability to, to focus and kind of stay, uh, take stock of things, especially when you're in the whirlwind of like, you know, like you said in the chat, people saying <laughs> incredibly Everything. fucked up things and nasty shit. At, but for you to be able to say, look, I've lost this, this, and this, and your ability to accept that and go, okay, but that doesn't, because a lot of people will go, I've lost this, this, and this. Who gives a shit if I lose? the rest of this, your ability to go, I've lost this, this, and this. Okay, enough. Let's stop the fucking bleeding so I don't lose this other stuff. I mean, that's the that's the definition of growth right there. Well, and I, I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, I've had the opposite mindset before too, including right before that where um, – you know, it's, it's, well, you know, I've, who cares, right? Uh, they can't do anything else to me. Or I can't lose anything else. Well, I can tell you that that's the wrong, <laughs> yeah. that's the wrong mentality because it can almost always get worse. Uh, and, you know, there's been points this year and I've had some other, you know, decent, uh, stretches this year, uh, and then, you know, fall off or get back into those bad habits. And, you know, I have a bad tendency if I don't watch it where, you know, just who cares? Devil may care, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, just burn it all down. They can't take anything else from me. They can't do this or that. Well, yeah, they can. Yeah. Uh, and it will happen uh, if you lean into that. So, uh, right. you know, that's something in myself that I have to guard against. Yeah. Uh, keep the Ralph mail on the air. And then when you hit stop streaming, uh, put the Ralph mail to bed until you uh, hit start streaming again, basically. That's right. Uh, and, you know, uh, one of my problems, uh, I guess, has been, um, you know, the, the, this bleeding over into the personal, uh, yeah. or, you know, I'm used to battle mode, um, on air and then letting that drift over into my personal life and treating mm. some of those engagements, um, 
you know, like it needs to be a firestorm online. And so that's been a problem. And I won't say that I have it, you know, I'm there every day. You know, sometimes you're like, oh, you're hearing this or somebody says that. Yeah. You want to respond or you want to throw a needle their way. Right. Uh, And so that's something that I've had to guard against. Uh, But it's funny because, you know, I'm I'm just a regular person like, you know, uh, on air, you know, I'm an entertainer and it's not fake. You know, it's just me cranked up sure. uh, a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I've met people, <laughs> I met this guy actually in Portugal I was talking about earlier and he was surprised. He's like, I, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to meet you. Like people were like, <laughs> yeah, this guy's crazy. Like you can't meet him in person. It's, he's insane. Like, and then he met me and I was, you know, just a normal person and kind of low key. Not that I can't, you know, entertain and, yeah. and be spiced up, but you know, I'm, I'm just a regular person in real life. But one of the problems uh, has been, um, letting the the online um, combatant mentality shift into yeah. uh, the personal or, you know, some people in your in your personal life or whatever, they want to say this in public and you feel like you need to treat them um, like they're just another combatant yeah. on the field. And that's that's not what you want to do, even if they're taking shots, even if they're, yeah. you know, leaking stuff, true and untrue. Like I said, some of the stuff's true. Um, it's it's only you just have to resist. It's only going to be just a show. As long as you make it just a show. If you make it more than that, it's going to be more than that. But if you go, hey, it's just a show and I'm a regular person. If you keep that line, you know, you're in control more than you think you are. And if you if you shut it off when the stream ends and then you put it back on when the stream ends, then you've already won the game. Like you, you've already controlled, you know, where that goes. I mean, I, I did want to talk to you before we run out of time here and we have sure. to catch a plane and all that. The, the, the attack in... Portugal. Now, to me, that's kind of where it went. Okay, guys, look, th- that that was kind of one of those moments where you know we were kind of new to the internet still, and we were like, like I said, I come from radio where the other morning shows we'd talk shit about them, we'd bust their balls, and they'd shit on us, and yeah, we'd say terrible things. But if we ever saw each other in public, we'd go, look, I I want to kick the shit out of you and your program, but you know, eh, best of luck to you as a person and this and that. The 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 physical attack. Um, I, I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you've pissed off. I don't care uh, what uh, foibles and misfortunes you may have had. The laying hands on people and beating, you know, beating them up and jumping them kind of shit. Not, not only is that a terrifying uh, prospect for anyone who, who broadcasts, but also it's just, it's, it's going down the wrong road, man. It's, I, I don't, and when people cheer it and everything else, it's like, Guys, this is this is not the this is not the direction we want to be going in. Yeah, and I had a lot of people. So there were people who cheered it, and there were people, you know, the ones who really hate me. And they're like, "Oh, this is great," and this or that. But I I've, I heard from other people, even some people who hated me at the time. They're like, "That was the moment where I thought, wow, okay, this is." I'm looking at the 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 Ralph hate in a little bit different way. At least the extreme <laughs> haters, where it's like, yeah. you know, if I'd gotten killed, uh, some of these people would have thought it was great. Right. Uh, and you see them say it, and it's like, okay, well, uh, that's. And I know I've said a lot of wild shit. Right on air, and sure. um, but it's you know I'm out here entertaining uh, versus some people actually want to see you die. Uh, they yeah. want to see you get hurt. They want to see you get maimed. Um, but uh, I, I will say there was there were a lot of people, even some of my extreme haters or less extreme than the most extreme, who were like, okay, I started seeing this in a little bit different light, and then I had um, several other streamers and stuff where they're like, uh, okay. Probably because they're thinking about it could happen to them too. Yeah, yeah, yes. right. Where it's like, okay, this thing is is a little bonkers, right? Uh, this guy's getting attacked on the streets. Uh, you know, it's being filmed. You know, there was a woman there who got thrown in the street and got her head busted. A local who was trying to oh, break shit. it up, and this big thug just grabbed her and threw her out in the middle of traffic, and she hit her head on the ground and had a concussion and was bleeding from the skull. Uh, and you know, the the insane thug uh, who did it thought it was funny. His buddy Cog, whose brother calls him a pedophile, uh, thought it was. <laughs> funny like and it's like well this you know it wasn't even just me that got hurt it was this innocent woman and she could have been killed you know mm. the way she was thrown yeah. out in traffic uh and i don't know just an insane situation and you know i leaned into it and i'm yelling you know fucking kill me in the street I yeah yeah uh and so it's like I also had somebody tell me they were like, well, your reaction to it is what made it uh, so compelling, too, right. because you're on camera and you're like, I'm literally bleeding from the head and just yeah. flipping them off in the middle of Lisbon in the fucking street. Uh, and, you know, I leaned into it because, you know, it's like, whatever, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was crazy and it, it did 
you know, wake some people up and, and scare a few people. Uh, so, well, I mean, including you, know, you right? Like that. Yeah. I mean, that that's well, you, you can't walk away true. from something like that without going, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go through something like that again. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> right. but it, you know, in the moment the adrenaline kicks in and it's like, okay, the yeah. cameras are on and it's like this guy, this thugs hit me in the head and I'm just like, and I, luckily I have a pretty strong jaw. <laughs> it's pretty hard to take me on out. I don't want to f- feel that again necessarily, yeah. but uh, you know, the adrenaline kicks in and the camera's on and you're just like, fuck it. Uh, but you know, you think about it later on and later on that night after I did my show and I'm sitting there thinking about it and it's like, okay, this this thing is fucking crazy. Yeah. Right? Like I'm yeah. getting attacked in the streets internationally, people fundraising to come and attack me. Uh, and you know, part of it's me, right. Part of it is I leaned into the, the heel sure. persona and pro wrestling and all that stuff. Um, but you know, there's, there's some psychotic people out there. Uh, you, and if you, uh, indulge it too much, it's, it's about your reaction, right? Yes. Uh, you can always control your reaction. You can't was, control what other people do. I was just going to say that. And, and you saying it before I could say it, uh, makes me believe that, that this road you're on now is going to continue because you've got the right idea. You can't control what they're going to say. You can't control what they're going to wish upon you. You just have to kind of consider that the flip side of what you're doing. You get to go on your show. You have this wonderful uh, gift and ability to say what you want and do what you want. You just have to be able to accept that you can't change, that other people are going to say horrific shit about it. You divorce yourself from it. You move on, and you continue on this this path of self-improvement. It, it looks like you've got the right attitude, and you know the, the kill stream is still going. you got Dick Masterson on tonight. Uh, before we do uh, have to run here, all the places where people can find you, all the places where they can follow you. So Killstream live on Rumble, and we'll be live about 2 p.m. Eastern today. Like you said, Dick Masterson, Amy Therese, uh, at the Ralph Retort on Twitter, probably my main platform, or X, whatever they call it now. I'm yeah. kind of a Twitter slash X uh, addict, so you'll usually find me over there, t.me uh, slash the Ralph Retort on Telegram, killstream.live slash podcast, and uh, oh, at Killstream Live on Twitter. That's the Killstream account, too. So um, those are the places you can find me, and I, I really appreciate you guys having me today, and I hope you have a safe trip to vegas don't indulge too much like i got you in the summer uh so keep it yeah. keep it under control and uh you know i hope best. you have fun in vegas one of my favorite cities still it's yeah it's, uh, and i've had a lot of good times there too it's so. it's one it's of amazing. our it's one of our favorite places uh we actually got married in the juno gardens at caesar's palace so every year we kind of return to the scene of the crime if you will and it's uh i've heard of some people who've got married in vegas yeah uh, but uh yeah it's, it's a great it's a time. special place it's yeah. a special place uh a lot of fun stuff to do and i and i do love that city so so stay safe, and uh, I hope the Raiders go down because fuck the Raiders. I'm a fuck Chiefs the Raiders fan. indeed. Uh, Thank absolutely. you. Yes, fuck the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, and good luck on that too, brother. And I appreciate you guys having me here this uh, morning. You know, and and thanks for uh, you know thanks for uh, you know uh, it, it commu- the communication, the unblocking, and us kind of you know it, there there was nothing. I'm not saying working shit out. There's nothing to work out, but just like you know accepting us saying hey, you know we fucking joined on a pile on. We're sorry about that. Everybody we talk to says you're all right. And, uh, and coming on the show and everything else. And it's really good to kind of talk to you about the journey you've been on because I really, I, I feel really confident now after talking to you that you're going to keep this thing up and you're going to keep going because you do seem to have uh, the right attitude about all of that. So I wish you the best. I wish the kill stream Thank the you. best. Uh, watch Dick Masterson on uh, the, the kill stream tonight with Ethan Ralph. Uh, Ethan Ralph, our guest today. Thank you very much, buddy, and take Thank it you. easy. Be well. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, there it is. Ethan Ralph. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.